on a Monday. Going to have a big show. We're out here at one of our favorite places, Mill Creek Brewing Company in Nolensville, as we get ready for a huge week in sports. Not only is the NCAA tournament bracket out, but uh, the NFL's free agency legal negotiating window starts later on today. It's also called legal tampering, which makes no sense, but it'll be a huge week for A to Z sports all across sports, whether it's basketball tournament action or uh, the NFL and the Titans free agency as they will get going a little later on today with a bunch of NFL news that we'll react to on Tuesday and Wednesday. But today, Zach, we are talking NCAA tournament draw and the brackets and how the Tennessee Vols expectations on how far they can go. They rely on two things and two people. So we'll discuss that. We'll ask you guys, are you more optimistic or pessimistic in the Vols tournament chances now that you actually know what the bracket looks like? Uh, then we'll then we'll get our predictions on how far you think Tennessee will can get and why, and then we'll give our initial final four predictions for a bad sales job end of show segment here on a Monday. Uh, let's get this thing going live here from Mill Creek Brewery and their sponsor of our bracket challenge. Uh, they also have a huge event coming up on Saturday, the Cornhole Classic, that you can get a team for just 150 bucks, and that includes a lot of things. Open bar, it's gonna be fantastic here at Mill Creek Brewing Company in Nolansville. You ready? Yeah. Oh, I'm ready, Batman. I am ready. And look, fool me once, don't fool me twice. Uh, I got to give props to my co-host, Austin. He saw my $39 Batman suit. Did not look good that day. Let's just say I looked more like a tick. He went closer to Hollywood studio quality today. And I a little intimidated today. Usually I'm not intimidated, but... Uh, I like the suit. I respect the suit, but more importantly, I respect the magic bucket, and that's why we are here. Why we? Are, another reason why we are here is because of the NCAA tournament. As Austin, you mentioned, they are the official sp sponsor of our bracket. Look today. We're going to be putting out on our social media. We've got great prizes ahead. We I, I, two years ago because last year they didn't have the tournament. 180 people have signed up. Our plus almost 200. We need more. We need more this year. So we will put that out on our social media and on our website. Look to sign up for A to Z's official bracket later today. Before we get going, we are broadcasting live here at Mill Creek on Facebook, on YouTube, on Twitter, and on Twitch. Make sure we pop up in your Twitter followers timeline. If you please retweet and share the show, subscribe to our YouTube channel. we got more things going out there as well as on Facebook. What's going on, Facebookers? More people will pile in over the next five to ten minutes as you do. Please share the show. Sharing is caring. Bottom left corner of your screen. Share. Share now to public. That is share. Share now to public. Batman, let's get this party started. Yep, let's do it officially. Welcome in the A to Z Sports, powered by BetMGM. I'm Austin Stanley. He is Zach Bingham. Make sure you follow us on Twitter, at A to Z Sports, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, uh, we are Nashville's On Demand Sports Talk Network, and we go live every weekday morning at 8 Central Time. Got to thank our sponsors because they make it happen for our show, for our business, and for you guys. Renters Warehouse Nashville. To find out how much your home can rent for, head to renterswarehouse.com. Mandu, the pulse of fitness, where one 15-minute workout equals five-plus hours in the weight room. Mandu.com, your first workout's free. Wilson County Hyundai for your brand-new ride. Check them out, wilsoncountyhyundai.com. Uh, uh, Calvin and Settle for your brand new hardwood floors and finishings at calvinandsettle.com and the Bone and Joint Institute, boneandjointtn.org, the region's destination for comprehensive orthopedic and sports medicine care at boneandjointtn.org. So, yes, I am Batman today and I did spend a decent amount of money on this costume, but I think it's worth it, at least to not look like Zach's tick that he did uh, back uh, about a month or so ago. So, now we have seen the NCAA tournament bracket. The SEC tournament took place here in Nashville uh, over the weekend. The Vols had an exit that was a little earlier than I think people thought as it was about midway through the second half and Tennessee was up 15 points on Alabama. But, Zach, how do you feel overall about the general uh, positioning of the Tennessee Vols basketball program as they are right now? Uh, well, the, I was – look, it's a tough – what, it's a tough thing in general to win the NCAA tournament, right? There's so many teams. Basketball is a game of runs, as is this tournament. You can get hot. I think this year, without the blue bloods of the likes of Duke and 
and Kentucky. This is going to be a strange tournament, just like 2020 was a strange year, and this past season was a strange season. I think Tennessee didn't get the worst draw in the bracket. Surprisingly, we'll dive into it a little bit later, but I thought the number one seeded Gonzaga, Zags, uh, the West is tough. The West makes no sense. So I think for Tennessee, the fact that they're not in the West of the likes of Oklahoma, then you have Virginia, USC, Kansas, Oregon, and Iowa. If I was Gonzaga, I would be pissed. So the number one seed, I think uh, they have the worst draw in, in as far as the region of the basketball that I have seen. And I've watched more basketball because of Bet MGM. Yeah, and I've right. won more money because, because of, of Bet MGM. Yeah. Uh-huh. Red hot yeah. this past weekend, but we'll get into that later. But for Tennessee, uh, I think you could persuade me if, and maybe Austin, you can do this uh, earlier or early on in the show okay. that the PAC 12 champion, Oregon state Beaver Beavers are a good draw in the first seed. They are hot though. They are hot. Yeah, they are hot. They've won six out of their last seven. They, uh, about a month ago, they were 11 and 11. They were 500. They end uh, winning six of the last seven, so they're 17 and 12. They won three games in a row in the Pac-12 champions and the tournament to win the championship. They cost me some money at MGM on Friday night with Oregon. Uh, I picked Oregon to win in a parlay, and the Beavers got me there. But uh, yeah, Oregon Oregon State is probably the weakest of the 12. They wouldn't have made the tournament if they didn't win the Pac-12 tournament, in my opinion. They, I don't think they were an already an at-large team. And by them winning their conference tournament and just getting a 12 seed. I think that kind of proves that. So they're hot. Check this, though. They haven't won an NCAA tournament game in 39 years. So not only are the Beavers hot, they are also motivated and trying to do something that nobody has done at that school in four decades. So that is interesting. And they don't want to be considered a fluke. No team wants to be considered, oh, you got hot in your conference championship, you won the Pac-12 but you did nothing in the tournament. That right. is a terrible look for a team. No doubt. No doubt. So you've got that. Then you've got potential of Oklahoma State or Liberty. Oklahoma State has also cost me money over the last several days, too, and what they've been able to do the last couple of weeks. Cade Cunningham's a beast of a freshman. That's a very good basketball team. Then another orange team, Illinois, is the one seed. And then so Tennessee has a very orange route to get to the Elite Eight if they're able to get that far. But in my opinion, Zach, I think Tennessee's success in this NCAA tournament comes down to two things. And I'll walk through them uh, one by one. The first thing is John Fulkerson's health. John Fulkerson is very important to this team. We know this Tennessee Vols basketball team does not have the leadership that it did a couple years ago with Grant Williams and Admiral Schofield and even Jordan Bone and Kyle Alexander with those four guys. They have to have John Fulkerson at least be out there uh, to, to provide energy and leadership for them if they want to have real tournament success. And by the way, he looked on Saturday watching the Alabama game with a, with a big, big bruise on his face. He had a procedure uh, in Nashville on a facial fracture over the weekend. His status is day-to-day, but I think John Fulkerson provides so much for this Vols basketball team, and they need him out there. And Tennessee plays Friday at 3.30. They could have drawn – remember, the tournament this year does not start until Friday for the big games. Instead of a Thursday-Friday, it's a Friday-Saturday. It would have been better if Tennessee could have got a Saturday start to give Fulkerson an extra day. But you can't deny how big John Fulkerson is. Yeah, and we haven't had a chance to talk about that Bush League elbow that uh, the Florida Gators gave him. Uh, That was – and look, I'm not a Tennessee fan. That's uncalled for. Like that, there was rivalry in that elbow. Elbow, and to play dirty like that, I, I think I honestly think the public should have attacked Florida a little bit more. I don't need your half-ass apology. You did that. It's like the guy that gets road rage and then tries to run you off the road and actually nips you and then apologizes for it. No, you don't apologize. You 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 injured you injured was, one of their best players. It was a double elbow. It was the right elbow there where he looked like he was trying to throw it, punch right at his throat, and then the swing around of the elbow once they were heading back up the floor. That was rough. It was rough to watch. I, I think Fulkerson probably has a slight concussion, and then whatever facial fracture he's dealing with, 
that's a big deal. But our own Jack Gentry, Zach, when you were out on vacation last Monday, Jack brought this stat up. The Vols are 13-1 and one when John Fulkerson this year scores double digits. 13 and 1 when Fulkerson's and got double digits. Early on in the year, he was leading the team. He was averaging 12 points a game. Yes. So that goes to that stat early on in the season. And he was playing probably the best basketball to a point. And then again, then Tennessee has had their ups and downs in the second half of the season. Yes. And, and when, when John Fulkerson does not score double digits, the Vols are five and seven. And that includes a win Saturday against Florida or Friday against Florida when Fulkerson scored eight early but couldn't finish the game because of the injury. And then obviously he didn't play against Alabama, so they lost. So 13 and one when Fulkerson scores 10 plus, five and seven when he doesn't. I think that's a big deal uh, for Tennessee in this tournament. Yeah, no, I, I, it definitely is a big deal because of the leadership quality. I think, uh, you know, at the end of the season, the storyline uh, was him crying after the Florida game because. Tennessee means so much to him. Look, he's a college student. He's played a lot of ball at, at Tennessee. I get the emotion. But he needs to be in this lineup. I don't know if that he's going to be. Yeah, that concerns me. It's the head, man. Yeah, it's, 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 it's just an injury. Now, the good thing is, speaking of mask, Batman, yeah. you can slap like the line I have. You can slap a mask on him. But it's, it's not just the concussion. It's the concussion and the facial fracture that just had a procedure on. That's what it's, the mask protects against. Right, but then the, then it's the concussion. Like, how quickly can a guy get through concussion protocol uh, at, you know, while he's dealing with a facial fracture? That's to be seen. So uh, I, do, I do think that's interesting because Fulkerson, as, as I will, brings up, couldn't open his eyes. That seems like a bad concussion. Can't imagine he plays. He was, he was struggling. He had earplugs in on Saturday for that game uh, there too. So, Zach, my second – my second thing Tennessee's tournament hopes rely on are Rick Barnes coaching. Rick Barnes has been at Texas and Tennessee for the past 20-plus years. In those 20-plus years, he has done a fantastic job in getting to the NCAA tournament, but Rick Barnes has only gotten to the Sweet 16 or further six times. There have been so many instances where Rick Barnes, with a very talented basketball team, has had an early exit in the first weekend of the basketball tournament. So only six times in the last 20-plus tournaments, Rick Barnes has been able to get to the Sweet 16 or further. He cannot have a bad performance on the bench like he did in the second half against Alabama where they gave up a 15-point lead in that. What did you think about that game? Because that was the last performance that we saw Tennessee and will see until they play Oregon State on Friday at 3.30. What did you think about that game? I, I thought it was ugly. Did, at, at halftime, Tennessee fans had to be thinking, I like where we're at. Oh, absolutely. You're up, what, eight eight points or so at halftime, or maybe it was five at that point against Alabama. You had controlled the tempo of it, uh, even without Fulkerson. But, and then they, they extended on that. They extended on that halftime leading, got up to 15, and then the wheels fell off. And that's the worst part about this Tennessee team is that they can go minutes on end without scoring. I, I believe they went five consecutive minutes without a point that allowed Alabama to go on a 14-0 run to make it a one-point game. And turnovers, Springer can get sloppy with the ball. Johnson can get sloppy with the ball. We know Viscovi has tendencies to get sloppy. So their ball handlers cannot afford to allow that to happen. And Rick Barnes can't allow that to happen. And Rick Barnes needs to be able to see that happening and do something about it quicker. There are things you can do up 15 points to avoid a comeback, and Tennessee could not do any of that. It was a bad coaching performance by Rick Barnes in the second half. All right, so let's get to this. And this is uh, – I'm, I'm curious to see what everybody has to say about this. this is get, we'll get you guys more involved yep. as we broadcast live from Milk Creek Brewing Company right here in Nolansville, a great place, and the title sponsor of our NCAA bracket. We will – Put that out there later today on social media, on our website. It's through ESPN. We've done it in years past. We've had 200-plus entries. We want more. We want more. So look for that this afternoon, uh, right after the show. But here's the question, all right? Are you optimistic or are you pessimistic in the Vols tournament chances now that the brackets have been released and you know the road to the Final Four? 
This is going to be a different Final Four. Everything's going to be played in the Indianapolis area. Yep. It's not going to be traditional. As you yep. said, it's not going to start Thursday and Friday. It's going to start Friday and Saturday. It's going to be in a indie bubble to a degree. Mm -hmm. But are you more optimistic or pessimistic in the tournament chances Tennessee has now that the bracket is released? Comment in the comment section. We'd love to hear what you guys have to say. All right, but first let me tell you guys about Renters Warehouse and RentersWarehouse.com, the professional landlords in the Nashville area. Go to RentersWarehouse.com to find out how much your home can rent for. There's so many different ways that you can uh, use Renters Warehouse to your benefit. You can create extra cash flows for you and your family. You don't have to sell your home when you move. You can. It's a one-time transaction. Or you can turn that property into a cash flow machine, into a cash register that rings every month and make you more money. It also helps you earn long-term equity uh, for early retirement there with rental property. Renterswarehouse.com is where to go. It is eSports. Don't forget BetMGM. What I figured out, Austin, is I've looked at your Batman suit through my screen like everybody else is. Yes. It's because of the artificial padding and muscles that you have that you look jacked. I now, am jacked. Well, you Mandu, look... Mandu tells me that. Uh, Mandu has helped you in a big way, but... This they is, have not made your pectorials look like that. Well, no, I mean this is this is what I'm not a superhero. I I, I, I know, but look, I, that's why I say it, it is a good look. This suit overall, I'm impressed with this suit overall. I'm also impressed with BetMGM. Download the app today, especially tournament time. Austin, I big cash money yesterday. The Fighting Illini of Illinois, who Tennessee actually may fee, uh, fate, uh, face in a couple of rounds. Yep. They did very, very well. Make sure you use the promo code ATOZ Sports. You can get risk free bets. They got promotions going out, constantly giving you good parlay boosts. That's a great thing about a bet MGM code A to Z Sports. Yeah. So the question is are you more optimistic or pessimistic in the Vols tournament chances now that the bracket is out? I see NKWA it says pessimistic on Twitter. Uh, let's read some more comments uh, there. Jeff says very pessimistic. Tennessee's in the region from hell. I don't know about that. I know. The, the region from hell is in the West. In That's opinion. where Gonzaga is. That is the region from hell. Yes. Uh, I, I, the, go look at it. I also understand why Batman moves like he's like his head his neck doesn't work because I'm having to do the same thing. Uh, Juan says, optimistic to the Sweet 16, not much further. However, if there are some upsets, it could pace, pave the way for an easier path if it happens. Um, let's see. I know my ears are crooked. Uh, for sure. Uh, Josh is optimistic. Anything can happen. It just hurts if Folk Folkelson can't play. Um, Danny says pessimistic. Oklahoma State will beat Tennessee in the, round, in the second round. Uh, Rob likes the Midwest region. Evan says, I'm way overly optimistic, drinking all the orange Kool-Aid. Trey says, that's a knock on Barnes. His tournament record is not stellar throughout his career. I think UT can make the Sweet 16 if they play like they did against Bama. Have to limit the scoring droughts. Uh, some more Rob says the region sets up nicely. Uh, Greg says the Vols are great at getting uh, up for one game. Too inconsistent to string them together. I believe Jack also mentioned that Tennessee's – it's been a long time since Tennessee has won three games in a row, and that proved to be the case over the weekend because they beat Florida on Sunday, right, and the last game of the regular season. They beat Florida again on Friday, and they can't win that third game in a row. All they got to do now that they've lost. That's good point. All they got to do is you beat o Oregon. Yeah, you're playing different teams though, oh, yeah, not you, just you, Florida. Well, yeah, you can't be. Yeah, but Florida wiped them by 25 plus in Gainesville earlier in the year, so that's something. But that, yeah, Oregon that's State, something that tells you more about Tennessee. Again, two wins in a row gets you to the Sweet 16, and, and we'll talk about expectations and what they need to get to. But I, Zach, overall, I am, I am more optimistic in this team's expectations. Now that I've seen the bracket, the bracket makes me change my opinion. Before I saw the bracket, I'm thinking Tennessee is going to be a five or six seed. They could easily lose the 11 or 12, and there's no way they're going to beat the four or three. Like that was, that was my expectation was if they win one game, that's, a, that's something that I would be expecting, one game that they win. But now that I see this, I actually kind of feel like Tennessee's chances are better on it. And we'll talk about some, some analytics about where they can go. But a lot of people are saying Oregon State is the weakest 12 seed in the entire field. Because of their history of what their season was and the run that they made in the Pac-12 
and how they got into the tournament. I agree with that. Yes. I think because, but college basketball, especially, is about getting hot. Yes. And they're hot. But Tennessee's also very talented. Tennessee's not hot, though. Uh, they played really well against Alabama. That went, uh, no, they didn't. They, they played well. <laughs> the results are in, they and that's wrong. Well for 70% of that game against you didn't Alabama. say that. And then they <laughs> cost themselves. You so, didn't okay, say that. Fair, fair. Uh, without Fulkerson. So, Fulkerson, again, my two things that, that depends on where this team goes is Fulkerson and Rick Barnes. And so, I, my, I'm more optimistic now that I saw the draw. Oklahoma State does scare me a little because Cade Cunningham is a beast. Tennessee's best thing is defense, though. And so, I think defensively, they can come up with a way uh, to, to really try to corral what Cade Cunningham can do. And, and I do like Tennessee's now – Besides Fulkerson's injury that happened, they've had a lot of injuries that have been ailing them over weeks on end. I think they're relatively healthy, minus Fulkerson. Guys who have been dealing with things have now gotten through those. And so I am more optimistic now that I've actually seen the bracket. All right. Uh, I'm going to just say this. This is not – I'm not a hater. I'm not a Tennessee fan. But this team doesn't have it. And I, I, it just doesn't. So can it make a run? I think based on Rick Barnes's experience, Fulkerson, the ifs of that, can they? Maybe. But there's a 70 to 80% chance that they don't make it out of the first weekend, in my opinion. Well, yeah, but that's in but so so uh, well, I'm not optimistic. But again, like if you're looking at the seeding, like they're not like based on them being a five seed, the high if the higher seeds advance, chalk tells you that they're not gonna make it out of the first weekend. Because Chalk tells you they need an upset. Team. No, but they're they're playing a, a hot team in which they are not. They are coming off of a disastrous second half in the SEC tournament versus Bama. Then there would, if Chalk does uh, happen. happen, then they would play Oklahoma State, who's red hot. Uh, they're hot. I don't know, red hot. They're really, really hot. They're good too. They're talented. Really, really, really I, hot. I, like I, I want. <laughs> what are you, what are you I, talking I want, about, Batman? I really want to see. Hey, man, take your bat pill. You don't make any sense. It's kind of hard to do this. Show really, really hot. This mask on. Yeah. So you, so you're going from a uh, a hot team that has just won the Pac-12 to, in your words, a really, really hot team in Oklahoma State. That's called pessimistic if you're a Tennessee fan. But I, I, they're I, just inconsistent, I, guys. I know that they 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 can't they can't play the same way for an extended amount of time, for an extended amount of games. They just have proven that to me in the second half of the year. Yes. I, I watch them because it is my responsibility to watch them. They Defensively, they can't play well. And then they go on these spurts where they just give up a bunch of points. That make no sense. Second half against Alabama. So I, I, this is not Admiral Schofield and Grant Williams. That team, I believed in. This team with one of their best players in Fulkerson being questionable and then being inconsistent, I do not believe in Tennessee. And, I, look, they ain't getting past Illinois. I'll I'll just – here's foreshadowing of later in the show. The Illini are going to the Final Four, in my opinion. <laughs> that is my foreshadowing. I, We're going to ask you guys I, what you think. But the Fighting Illini won me about almost $400 yesterday. I'm riding that train, baby. I am riding that train. Thank you, BetMGM, I, for the money. I, I will say – you know, I, I said I want to see Tennessee versus Oklahoma State. I think that's a fantastic game. You know what's a really good game in the first round that I'm looking forward to? It's who Illinois might play. Loyola Chicago versus Georgia Tech, who came out of nowhere uh, and helped, you know, with some, you know, COVID stuff to win the ACC title. But Loyola Chicago versus Georgia Tech is a really good 8-9 game that sets up before Illinois. Loyola Chicago, who Tennessee fans know, far too well is a really good team once again yes they are and and to bring up a, a comment okay saying uh from michael zach is being extremely biased against the vols tennessee has played elite basketball several times this season well michael what kind of basketball did they play when they were in oxford at old miss what kind Ugly. of basketball Ugly. did they play against lsu which the second half wasn't even a game Ugly. because they got their the break speed in what kind of basketball did they play against Kentucky the second time around at home? Yeah. What kind of basketball did they play against 
Auburn, a team that they had no right of losing to late in the season? And then what kind of basketball did they play in the second half against Alabama in the SEC tournament? So, Michael, elite basketball, yeah. Don't just look at all the good things. You have to look at their flaws. And you have to look at to be honest, you have but to they're fatal. They're you fatal. Have to, you have to their flaws both. are fatal. Because Cedric's right. Yeah, what about Kansas? They wiped Kansas. But then but then they let it down against Ole Miss the next game. Like, that's the point that Zach's making. And for everybody asking the, in the chat, oh, who is Ole Miss playing in the tournament? Ole Miss has nothing to do with this other than the fact that them not being in the tournament but still beating Tennessee think, is exactly the point that Zach's trying to you make. You think I care? Uh, <laughs> o- Ole Miss, if they would have won one more game, they shouldn't have made it. If they would have beaten LSU, which they, they didn't deserve to make it to the tournament. I am pretty, like, open about what I think about things, okay? Ole Miss did not deserve. So you could say, oh, man, man. that doesn't matter. I'm speaking, and I, I'm, I'm not being a Tennessee hater. I'm basing my opinion on what I've seen for this team this year, coached by Rick Barnes. All right. So that's all I'm doing. I've got simulations. Okay. I've got somebody who's who Spose? does. Did no, Spose no, did simulate not, this? No, they, they do, God uh, help they us. Do pro football. This is a 10,000 simulations of the bracket from somebody who does this for a living. 10,000 simulations of the bracket, and it shows exactly how far. The Vols will make it to first act. Tell everybody about Wilson County Hunt. I'm kind of curious to to hear what this has to say. Yeah. So, but I'm also curious, and I'm not actually. I'm curious to see the kind of inventory Wilson County Hyundai is going to have on Thursday when we are live broadcasting from Wilson County Hyundai. That's the place where you need to get your next ride, the Hyundai Palisade, which is their SUV. They've got 2021s in stock. Also, the Sonata that I drive. They got the Elantra, the smaller uh, sedan. They've got you covered for you or your family. If you're looking for a brand new vehicle or a used vehicle, go to Payne Bone and his team. Say, hey, look, I heard about you on A to Z Sports. How can I test drive a ride? Or go look at their inventory online at WilsonCountyHyundai.com. A to Z Sports here live from Mill Creek Brewing Co. in Nolensville. Guys, if you want to come watch the tournament on Saturday, they're also having their Cornhole Classic. It was supposed to be in the fall, now moved to the spring. So, a tournament, watching the tournament, sounds perfect. Cornhole tournament here at Mill Creek. I believe 64 teams in this tournament. So it's going to be really fun all day. It's just $150 for in, to enter a team, and you get a lot of stuff. You get entry into the event, a gift, lunch, open, bo- open bar, excuse me. You can also buy just a $25 ticket that gets you an open bar and lunch and silent auction entry as well. So Mill Creek Brewing Co., go to Eventbrite, search for the Mill Creek cornhole classic and you'll find it sign up for that saturday right here they've got tvs in here uh for the tournament will be on so check that out uh right there at event bright for the mill creek brewing cornhole classic here live at mill creek brewing Co. two things because yeah. i'm getting attacked on on the chat yep. about me because tennessee fans look you should support your team i get it but i'm here to just like prove you wrong to a degree okay. you know, they're talking about like they beat kansas they beat kansas Kansas at the end of January. It is March 15th today. Yeah. Kansas also, we learned out, or figured out, is not as good as the Kansas in the teams in the past. They were 11 and 6. Like, they weren't as good. So that win, though, I, and I watched that because I was in Arizona at the time. I rem- distinctly remember watching that with a bunch of Tennessee fans. Good, not great. In years past, that would have been a great win. Right. Okay. So. Uh, Luke Benz, who works for Yale Sports Group, who graduated from Yale a couple years ago, who does sports analytics and data science for a living, he simulated the NCAA bracket 10,000 times. 10,000 times in the simulation. Here's what he's got for Tennessee's Midwest region. Illinois is the favorite to make it out of the region 50% chance, right? right? Houston, the two seed is a 31% uh, chance to make it to the Final Four. I think about Houston. Houston is like the uh, Adam Morrison-led Zags team or the Jimmy for or J- for debt led Jimmer. BYU, Jimmy yeah. for debt, Jimmer for debt led BYU team. They are kind of the, the, the subtle team that has blown out their entire conference because they're just a better basketball team. Yeah, yeah. But can they do that consistently once they play better competition right. throughout the tournament? Right. So the three-seed West Virginia, I just mentioned uh, Houston, the two-seed, has a 31 chance in the Final Four. 
50% chance for Illinois. The three seed West Virginia has a 3.9% chance for the final four. The four seed Oklahoma State, just a 1.9% chance. Then the five seed, Tennessee is the five seed, but has the third highest chance in the region to make the final four ahead of West Virginia and Oklahoma State with a 5.5% chance to make the final four. So again, third best chances to make the final four in the Midwest region, according to Luke Benz of Yale. Smart. So then you look at Tennessee's actual chances. They have an 80% chance to win their first game, according to this 10,000 simulation. They have a 54% chance to win two games to make it to the Sweet 16. Then it drops off considerably because they would play Illinois, probably the high percentage of that time. And they have a 14% chance to make, to make the Elite Eight, which would have them beating Illinois if Illinois does not get upset by either Loyola Chicago or Georgia Tech. So I, I found that interesting because Clark Kellogg said on the CBS broadcast yesterday when the bracket came out that he has Tennessee as his dark horse team in this region. I pushed back on that some on Twitter. But again, Luke Benz, who works for Yale Sports Analytics, has Tennessee as the third best chances to make it out of the region behind Illinois and Houston. Now a distant third, yet above West Virginia and Oklahoma. State. Did they simulate Fulkerson in this simulation? That's a great question. <laughs> I have no idea. That's important. Yeah. So that simulation doesn't mean anything to me. No. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I get, I get <laughs> I, that. I, I understand I'm why. You, of, I, I understand why you're presenting it on the show. Well, because it's. But it's, to me personally, it doesn't. Well, because I, I, you know, just because this guy goes to Yale, or went to Yale, he has no connection to the University of Tennessee <laughs> at all. I did see uh, Didn't the guy that created Firefest. He was smart too. <laughs> Come on, like, but, just because my, somebody no, like my my point is though, Zach, there is zero connection to the University of Tennessee by this person doing this. That's I went and searched. For a some for somebody who does this for a living that has zero connection to the state of Tennessee. If anything, Yale live is so far uh, away from Tennessee as far as like uh, geographics and also like intellect that you could make take this for what it is. All right, so here's the question we'll ask you: How far will Tennessee actually make it in the NCAA tournament? How far will they go? Well, are they a Final Four team? Are they? Out of the first weekend team, are they a Sweet Sixteen week? A Sweet Sixteen team? Rick Barnes, I think, has shown that he can, right? Can he can can what? What's can? can I mean, I think it's important. Can what? I think he can. Th this he can is, make it to the NCAA tournament here's every what, year. This almost. is not a Final Four team, but Rick Barnes can earlier supersede in the year, expectations earlier in the year. In the month of January, this team, I thought, had Final Four ceiling. I, again, two I would have been a little skeptical. Two months that. ago, they looked really good. Maybe because of the uh, other the landscape of college basketball. Well, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Like, that goes into it. Two months ago, you thought with Springer and Johnson, along with uh, Josiah Jordan James and Pond's defense and the shooting of Victor Bailey, along with the leadership of Fulkerson, you thought Tennessee has – Final Four talent, and they could have a ceiling of that, depending on their draw. A ceiling does not mean expectations. They still have a lot of talent. They have three five-star guys, a freak Frenchman um, who is a who's blocking nine shots in a game in the SEC tournament, and then guys who can hit from deep. So, what are realistic expectations for the Vols? How far will Tennessee make it in the tournament? Real quick, let me tell you guys about man do the pulse of fitness these might be fake muscles uh right here with my batman suit but man do can help you build real muscles real functional muscles they activate 95 percent of your muscle fibers it's a 15 minute workout that simulates five plus hours in the weight room because of full body electronic muscle stimulation mandu.com your first workout is free don't knock it until you try it because i did man do on saturday morning and it's Monday morning. The two-hour soreness is setting in, and I am very, very sore right now. Again, mandu.com. Your first workout's free. Go try it. It's a 15-minute workout. You will feel it. You'll feel sore for the next couple of days, and you'll be like, yeah, this makes sense. This makes a lot of sense. Science is real. The results are real. Mandu.com. Your first workout's free. A to Z Sports. We are powered by BetMGM, and we are broadcasting live 
from Mill Creek Brewery. Look at this. You got to try this. The Explorer Amber Ale. It's brand new. It's fresh right here in, in Mill Creek. You can get it uh, at your local grocery store. You get it right here in the tap room. That's the easiest way because it's fresh. I mean, it's fresh everywhere, but especially right here in the tap room. They got a, a, a whole barrels and barrels of beer right behind us, uh, behind this great Mill Creek cr cooler. Question is, how far the ball is going to get get? Are going to go. Rob says round two. Michael says sweet 16. Louis says sweet 16. First game they lose from Alex. Sweet 16 from Juan. A lot of sweet 16ers. Dom says sweet 16 ceiling. First round exit is the four. Sweet 16 from Jeff Rubel <laughs> at best. <laughs> Who said first round exit is the floor? Like that's the Dom. best. That is the most. Dom? Dumb, dude. Of course, that's the floor. They're in the tournament. Like they can't do any less than that. <laughs> like, dumb. That honestly, that might be. Well, he said the biggest captain obvious comment ever on the show. Yeah, he didn't need the first round exit to the floor. <laughs> like, all he all he needed was Sweet Sixteen. Like that, that, I mean, I can barely see in his Batman mask, and so it's hard to like read it. But yeah, that's that's pretty captain obvious there, Dom. So we have uh, look. Deborah's going elite. Eight, which is probably the highest or furthest that we've seen. Sweet 16 from Brent is the ceiling. I don't see Tennessee beating Illinois without, even with Fulkerson, if he does come back. Here's where I'm at. I expect Tennessee to get bounced pretty early. This is where I think it's going to come down to. This is the, they're not going to get, if I'll, I'll say this. If they get to the next weekend, they're not going to beat Illinois. They're not. So I will say Tennessee, five minutes left to go in the game versus Oklahoma State. That's, I think, will define them. That where, where they will go after that, I think five minutes left to go in the second half against Oklahoma State because I expect Oklahoma State to beat Liberty. And I, uh, I think Tennessee. Somebody in the chat that's been saying that watch out for Liberty. I don't think that's going to happen. I think Oklahoma State has been tested too much in the Big Twelve in a deep Big Twelve. They got there's no great team. Texas is not great. I've seen them get beat by Texas Tech this this year, but Texas Tech is good. Texas is good. Kansas is good. Oklahoma State is good. Baylor. Baylor Baylor's really is good. great. Ba Baylor, Baylor's great. Baylor's great. But so they've been tested because they've had to play a Big 12 schedule. Oklahoma State, I think, is going to beat Liberty. I think Tennessee can beat Oregon State. Five minutes left to go. Second round against Oklahoma State will define their season. I, I was looking at the Oregon State matchup because I'll get to my where I, how far I think they can go. Oregon State is really a three-man team. Oregon State has three guys that stand out from the other. Ethan Thompson is their leading scorer, uh, a guard. He's 6'5". He's got some length. But Tennessee's got plenty of length that can guard that type of wing player. He averages 15 points a game. Then they've got Jared Lucas. He's their point guard. He averages 13 points a game uh, and does pretty well distributing the basketball uh, too. And then they've got their, their – really the only forward they play – and here's where I think this Oregon State game matches up well with Tennessee, maybe even without John Fulkerson, is because Oregon State only plays one forward more than 15 minutes a game. They play uh, Warith Aladish, I think is how you say his name. He averages uh, 27 minutes a game. He averages 10 points, 8 rebounds. He's only 6'7". He is like their version of Eve Pons. But I think Eve Pons is I haven't watched these guys play, but I think I can feel comfortable saying Eve Pons is probably a better athlete than yeah. that guy. Just because Eve Pons is a better athlete than most guys on the court doesn't mean he's a better basketball player, he's a better overall athlete. I think Tennessee has what it takes to match up well defensively with Oregon State's top three guys. They've got a couple dudes who can knock down the three outside of that. Then they got a seven foot one guy that doesn't do anything. They've got some other forwards that just don't do anything. They just eat up minutes and don't even have like rebounds. Like, they don't even rebound well, and they're seven foot tall. So I think without Fulkerson on Friday, Tennessee can play small and match up perfectly with the Oregon State Beavers. So I think they win that game. I think it might be a nail-biter. I think it's not going to be easy. But I think Tennessee beats Oregon State on Friday afternoon. 
I, I, I'm with you about Oklahoma State being a crunch time game. And can Tennessee learn from the mistake they just had against Alabama? Is Alabama a better basketball team than yeah. Oklahoma State? Yes. So I, I think Tennessee can win that game, but I kind of agree with you. I'm not expecting it. I think because I think those last five minutes will be the telltale sign of where Rick Barnes is in the coaching of these players of this season. Because I, I, I think I, I think that will matter. I think they will be in the game in the last five minutes against uh, Oklahoma State. Yeah, and it's, so I, I, and I'm, then and then it comes down to honestly, that's three guys who will probably be lottery picks with Cunningham, Springer, and Johnson, and seeing which of those three plays the best. Yeah. And and luckily, if you're when you're talking about those three guys, Tennessee's got two and they've got one. Right. So Cade Cunningham was was he the was he the player of the year in the Big 12 too? I knew he was a freshman of the year, but he might have been near near one of the best players in the Big 12 overall. But Cade Cunningham, how does he play down the stretch versus how does Springer and Keon Johnson play down the stretch? Because that's a that's a big deal with how that game will end relying on three superstar freshmen. He was the player of the year. Yeah. The guy was a freak. I mean, he's really good. And that usually those guys can will their team to win. Yeah. Early on. Now, can they do it deeper into the tournament? That sometimes get gets more difficult because the teams improve, right? It's hard to will your team singularly in the Elite Eight or even the Sweet 16 or, or obviously the Final Four to get to the finals but that one singular player. But I think they can do that with lesser competition early on in the tournament. I think the only way Tennessee can get to the Elite Eight is if Loyola, Chicago, or Georgia Tech somehow upsets Illinois. There's no way – I think there's no way Tennessee beats Illinois straight up. And look, and Loyola, Chicago is a capable basketball team. Now, it, it, it has to – it's one of those scenarios that we see every other year or so where an eight seed – gets unbelievably hot and knocks off a one. But I think I have I think Loyola Chicago needs to beat Georgia Tech for that upset to happen. I think Georgia Tech doesn't have a chance against Illinois. All right. As we move forward, Austin, I'm going to my initial I've watched more college basketball in the last couple of weeks than I did to start the season. I think I'm like a lot of people. Yeah. I have some upsets that I want to throw out there. That okay. I, I, like just upsets that I feel. I've seen people in the chat give their upset. I mean, Juan came out there and said Liberty will beat Oklahoma State. He went all caps. I mean, on that us. would. I mean, that would be if you're a Tennessee Vol fan. That's what you're. That would for. be phenomenal. I've got some upset uh, upsets that I want to talk through, and then also I also want to ask you how you think this tournament is going to shake out. I'm going to ask you a, a generalized question on the tournament. But I've got some upsets as I've gone through. Of I wouldn't be surprised if this team beat this team. If this seed beat this seed. Okay. I've got that in the holster. But, right. but first, I am going to tell the fine folks about Calvin and Subtle. That's where they should get their hardwood floors. CalvinandSubtle.com. It's very, very easy. You give them a call or go online. Change the equity of your home. Increase the equity of your home. Change the inside of your home with Calvin and Subtle. They've got great hardwood floors. You Once you pick out the material, whether it's in their, their showroom or they've got a book that they could come and you can go online, you can find a way to pick out your perfect hardwood floor. One to two weeks, they order the material and install. It's easy, easy breezy, as they say. Yep. Brand new hardwood floors, CalvinandSubtle.com. It is eSports. Don't forget, we are powered by BetMGM, the king of sports books. You can still download the app and use our promo code ATOZ Sports. That's ATOZ Sports. And then you get a risk free bet up to $600. That deal still working uh, right now. And there are so many different things you can do with the Instant Play tournament coming up. So, again, download the BetMGM app, sign up using our code ATOZ Sports, a risk free bet up to $600. They're the king of sports books. Uh, they got huge, awesome parlays, odds boost specials, and more. Visit betmgm.com for terms and conditions. You must be 21 years or older. Must be present in Tennessee. And for gambling problem support, call the Tennessee Red Line at 800-889-9789. All right, awesome. I'm going to go through each region, and I'm going to give you a couple of upset sets right. that I feel. I'm take notes because I trust you in this. All right. 
fucking these, read. These are page. upsets, though, right? I'm not yeah. just going to pick like a nine over an eight. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. These are upsets. Double digits. Yeah. West region. Okay. I wouldn't be surprised if Santa Barbara beats Creighton 12 over a five. I've won some money off Creighton. Uh, I, and I've seen Santa Barbara uh, as I've monitored college basketball. I think that could be a good game. I think Virginia is going to bounce back and beat Ohio, but that could be a close game the way that Virginia lost in the ACC tournament. Well, they didn't lose. Or, or got, 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 got. <laughs> they won at the COVID, buzzer over COVID. Syracuse. But they, but that, that game, Syracuse was a lesser opponent than Virginia. You are, they, they won at the buzzer. But Ohio is, I, I think that's going to be a closer game than imagined. That's kind of in my West region. But Santa Barbara over Creighton, I don't know. I kind of have a gut feeling. I'm also looking Kansas, Eastern Washington. I think Kansas, Bill Self, good quality coaches. I think can will themselves in maybe a, a questionable year so, to get through. Trend, look at who got bounced because of COVID and see how they respond. Exactly. Now these teams did, I know Kansas in, in Kansas's place, they were able to continue practicing after that. Yes. So maybe they're rested. Who knows? Let's go to the East. Another 12, five Georgetown hot in the big 10 tournament. And, and if you watch them, they played very well. Big East. Uh, or Big East, excuse me. So you, you have Colorado. I've seen up and down from Colorado this year. Colorado was very good at home in Boulder. You're not going to be playing at Boulder. You're going to be playing in Indy. Georgetown over Colorado. That could be something in the East region. Uh, that, that's probably the main upsets that I see in the East region. Mid that, that, that's, so you've got two 12 fives. 12 fives, yes. And those are usually trendy. Uh, of course. In, and the, you've in got the bigger programs as 12s. Right. Because of, well, a, weir Santa because of a weird yeah. year. Yeah. Uh, let's go with Syracuse over San Diego State. 11 over a 6 in the Midwest region. I think that could be something. I think and this is a 9 over an 8, but Georgia Tech, who won the ACC over Loyola Chicago. I know Loyola Chicago has name recognition over the last couple of years, but Georgia Tech has Sister, been tested. Sister Jean still alive? Yes, she is. Sister Jean. All right, let's play the age game. How old is Sister How Jean? How old is Sister Jean presently today? I love this game. How old is Sister Jean? She was, I want to say, 90. Figured out how old Beyonce was last night watching the Grammy. I want to say she she was 97 during that year. That year was the spring of 2018. So she is, is she, one, is she 100 even? She is not 100 even. You do not get that, but <laughs> close. Rob gets it correct. 101? She is 101. Sister Jean was birthed by her mother August 21st, 1919. Uh, I thought they were about to say August was, was her mother's name, which probably could have happened back then. Yeah, or Gertrude. <laughs> or something weird. <laughs> uh, Jean Dolores Smith is her name. Sister Jean, August 21st, 1919. Close. You do, I mean, you were one, I was you one, one off. off. I was, I was. Uh, pretty dang close. But you played good math there. Yes. Uh, so I, I look at I look at Georgia Tech, a nine, possibly over an eight. Okay. Syracuse, 11 over a six. Okay. Those are kind of the only ones that I like in the Midwest. Kalkin says she has seen a lot in her life. Like, no kidding. 1919 uh, to now, a lot of stuff happened. All right. I've got two. These are bigger upsets. I'm not sure if they will happen, but they're risk-taking. Okay. North Texas, 13 over Purdue. Purdue is big, though. They got big they're boys. always big. Yeah, but they got big they're boys. Always, they're always like the Boilermaker smokestacks. They, like they're just tall. They've got big centers, two, guy, two guys down low. But North Texas played really well down the stretch of their season. And then the other one, Texas Tech has just been up and down all season. I have not trusted Texas Tech. Okay. And this is more about me not trusting Texas Tech. Who's been good in the past? Are we right? in the South here? Yes, we're in the South. Utah State possibly as a 11 beating a 6 in Texas Tech. Those, those are kind of my upsets looking at double digits to beat singular digits. 
11 over a 6 and Utah State over Texas Tech and North Texas over Purdue. Upsets are going to happen. So here's yeah, my yeah, general yeah. question yeah. to you, Austin. Okay. Will this be an untraditional tournament like it was an untraditional year? Well, what, and, and what I mean by an that tournament? is crazy teams getting to the Final Four into the Elite Eight. More like the Winthrop's or the Utah State's or the Ohio's or the VCU's as a 10 seed or the Maryland's as a 10 seed or St. Uh, Bonaventure or Syracuse as a love seed or Moorhead State. Or is this going to be an extremely weird year where you have more weird names advance no, later I, on? I honestly feel like it's more chalky. I think this year's more chalky. Now, when you, we were talking about the Final Four, I think the weirdness happens this upcoming weekend. Like, look at Colgate. Colgate has only played 15 games this year. They've lost one. They play Arkansas. Arkansas has lost, been tested. Yes, Arkansas has been tested. Arkansas can score points. We know that. But who knows what Colgate can be? And could Colgate be an upset there, 14 over 3? I, I think the weirdness happens early, and then it fizzles out, and chalk rides its way to the final four, which is also in Indianapolis. So I um, wanted to sprinkle that in there. Now let's shift to our final four. Okay. What is Austin, your final is, four early prediction? This is, yeah, this is my initial final four. Whenever the bracket, like the first time I look at a bracket, I just go speed fill it out. I just do it with my gut before I analyze things. I just go through. So here's what I came out with with my initial final four starting on the left, top left of the bracket bracket, I go Gonzaga is a final four team, right? They're just that good. The last time, how about this stat, Zach? The last time Kentucky and Duke both missed the NCAA tournament was also the last time we as a country had an undefeated national champion in college basketball. Indiana back in 76, undefeated national Bobby champion. Knight. Also the same year, last time that both Kentucky and Duke were not in the overall tournament. That's weird. So Gonzaga is a final four team out of the East bottom left of your bracket. I think Alabama is that good. I have an Alabama in the final four <clears throat> top, right? I go with the Baylor bears. They lost at a good time to lose reset, get going. And then I think the uh, fighting Illini of Illinois uh, come out of the old bracket in the bottom right Midwest of your screen. So you are chalky. I'm going to start calling it the orange bracket. You, you're you're very chalky. Yeah, I am chalky. I got it, three ones and a two. And that's, again, my <laughs> initial gut of that's how I feel. Baylor Gonzaga have been the two best teams the entire year. Uh, and then you've got, uh, screw Michigan. I don't like Michigan. They screwed me over too many times. <laughs> Illinois, I think, is peaking at the right time to, to out of a tough Big Ten. And I think Alabama is kind of the same. So I've got... Hot conference champions with the best two teams that's been around all year as my initial final four. And look, Brent brings up something, uh, or excuse me, Dom. Dom redeems himself with something interesting. The weirdness will resemble the NBA playoff bubble. Watch upsets happen early, but eventually the Zags or the Illini take it home. Yeah, and actually I did have <clears throat> Gonzaga over Illinois in my championship game. Those are, I, I think those are the... Baylor's really good, though. But I think those, you could argue, is the two best teams. I like how Illinois is spread out. They've got really good guard play, and they've got a big man, right? And and they are just well-coached. They, they're a good team. Remember the last time Illinois made a deep run when they lost to North Carolina? They have, like, Who's their best player? D. Brown and Darren Williams. Yeah, Darren Williams. That's what I was thinking of. D. Brown was the actual leader of the team. Darren Williams was a freshman on that team. They had a couple other guys too. I thought Darren good. Williams was the best player on the team. Though. He was the best player. But, but he D, was young. D Brown was the like junior or senior on that team. All right, here's my I think this is a turn I I don't believe in Gonzaga because of their region. Sorry. I'm gonna go weird. Okay. Because your I your initial final four. Baylor and Illinois are one and one. I think those two teams with their bracket they're going to make it. Okay. I've seen a lot of Baylor. North Carolina, though, in that, like, North Carolina is scoring, like, a, like 80 to 100 points a game. Like, North Carolina versus Baylor will be must watch. Yeah, but I think Baylor's, again, well coached, which is important in the tournament. But Baylor and Illinois, I have as my one seeds in there. Yeah. 
On the other side of the bracket, I agree with you with Alabama. I've seen a lot of Alabama games. I think they are well coached as well, and they are are they can block your shot interior. Yeah. Like they, they've got long, lengthy guys on the end, and they have Petty who can take over in crunch time. But in the West region, I'm going to go different. All right. You know how I said Virginia and Ohio are going to be a good game? Yeah. I think Virginia is going to win that game. And I'm going to pick Virginia to go to the Final Four. Really? This is my initial Final Four. Okay. I think that's going to be a strange seating because I think they can beat Gonzaga. Virginia, again, well-coached, experienced. Virginia has been in this thing many, many years. They're still the reigning champion. And they are the reigning champion. Two I years think, running. I think that's on their back. I think Virginia makes a run and gets back to the Final Four. Virginia, Alabama, Baylor, and Illinois. That's okay. going to be one of my brackets. One of your brackets. How I many, do. I do two brackets. Two brackets, only two. Okay, I get that. I can respect that. All right. So there's our initial Final Four. Uh, Rob says uh, Gonzaga, Georgetown, Ohio State, Illinois, Georgetown coming out in the Final Four like that. <clears throat> That's pretty wild there. That would be a great story. Yeah, it would be, especially with Patrick Ewing as the head coach there. That would be interesting for sure. Uh, Juan says, Gonzaga won't win it all, and then goes all caps because they don't know how to handle a loss or a team winning w with them down. BYU had them on the ropes before collapsing. Part of BYU's collapse was because of Gonzaga. And you're saying they don't know how to handle a loss? What loss are they going to need to handle? Like, it's not like that doesn't well, come into play. Well, I think Juan is saying in that that regard that the cloud over this season is going to be chasing them. You're is, saying the pressure yeah. is going to get to Gonzaga? Yeah. Nobody puts pressure on Gonzaga? Well, now that they're in the tournament, there's pressure. I don't think so. Gonzaga is expected yeah, to win. There absolutely but, is pressure. Okay. You I, cannot not say I, that. I don't think Gonzaga. There, ha there is pressure. The country doesn't care enough about Gonzaga for Gonzaga to have pressure. Now they care about them being undefeated. Now I don't know. it doesn't even matter that it's Gonzaga. It's matter that they have not lost a game. All right, Rob brings up, who's the first one seed to lose? I think this is always a good question. I think I mentioned it earlier. Baylor versus North Carolina would be, would be interesting to watch. Um, I think, look, LSU could beat Michigan. Yeah. LSU's tough enough to beat Michigan. Yeah. Um, I, and, you know, I, I would go with those two. I think Michigan, uh, probably the first one seed to lose because Florida, I don't know if Florida could beat Michigan. Florida versus Michigan in the Sweet 16 would be a good game. Feels like a Citrus Bowl. <laughs> Are you talking about Florida State? For, no. Oh, that is Florida State. Sorry, the Batman mask cut off the state. Yeah, Florida State. That would uh, be, the that, that's not as fun. But uh, I, I think Michigan would be the first – one seed to lose over Baylor. All right. Well, we'll see. That, that's the best part about the tournament. The good thing is there is a tournament this year, right? right? We're getting back to some normalcy heading into 2021. Now it is time, Austin, for yep. bad sales job. I've got two that I'm uh, that I thought of this morning that I'm kind of going back in between. Okay. But I am ready for bad sales job yes. live from Mill Creek Brewing. Make sure we got a couple of uh, things. To, to get out of the way before we get to that. BetMGM, obviously download the app and use promo code A to Z Sports, but also sign up for Mill Creek's Cornhole Classic. It's only $150 per team. They got great, awesome prizes. Includes open bar, lunch, door prize tickets. They've got you covered right here at the Tap House. What a great atmosphere. Literally, they got a food truck inside this bad boy. They got all the beer right here. You can see that. They got taps that you can't see to our left. It's just, they got TVs. It is a great place to come to enjoy these tournament games. It's worth the, the small trip out here in Owensville, but it, it's a great, great place. Yep. All right. Bad sales job real quick. Let me tell you guys about the Bone & Joint Institute, boneandjointtn.org, the region's destination for comprehensive orthopedic and sports medicine care. Whenever that injury happens, know where to go to get your best uh, care uh, uh, possible, and that is the Bone and Joint Institute. Again, boneandjointtn.org in Franklin, but also right here in Nolansville where they have a sport ortho and rehab center, boneandjointtn.org. So it's bad sales job time here on the show. So, Zach, you've got two. 
Should I let you go first? Am I? I'm one up on you. You correct? are one up. I believe you are leading six to five in bad sales job. That is uh, what I think is the last count. All right, I'm gonna go with the second one. I'm gonna go with the second. One. Okay. All right. I'm gonna get. I, I, I'm gonna get my timer because you got 30 seconds to do this. That's right. Austin, I would like you to tell me and all of our viewers why not paying off your credit cards is a good idea. Building up debt on credit cards is a good idea. That's what I want you to sell us on. Take your time. The clock starts, obviously, when you start, but... Tell the viewers why not paying off your credit cards and building up, you know, credit card debt is a good idea. Well, you know, the key thing is these days, especially after this pandemic and during this pandemic, credit card companies are wanting you to open more credit card accounts. So all you got to do is once you reach your limit on one, open up a new one, spend whatever it is, the $4,000 in the first 60 days, and you get like 60,000 points. You do that, then you open up another one, you use the points, and you just start opening up eight to 10 credit cards because they're all giving you these incredible offers. And when you pass away, it's your family's problem. <laughs> that, was, that was actually not bad. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. It's like bizarro Dave Ramsey. <laughs> <laughs> it was like you're in a bad dream. It's like it's like you've turned on a commercial in hell and they're telling you everything that you shouldn't do, but trying to convince you that it's a good idea. Do I get bonus points for making Zach cry laugh? That was I didn't know how your approach was gonna be. It's so bad. I mean, it's not good. You didn't convince me of anything. <laughs> what do you want me to do? Oh man. Joker logic. <laughs> I literally felt like I was watching a uh, an infomercial in hell. That's well, what I felt. When you pass away, it's your family's problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Like, unfortunately, it was really bad, but it was really good. So yeah, I, I, I played myself. The entertainment value from that was really I good. I played myself. All right. Zach, your bad sales job. Uh, because it. it is free agency week, Zach Bingham, I would like you to tell and sell everybody on why Corey Davis should get more money on the open market than A.J. Brown should when his contract's over. Why Corey Davis is more valuable and should get more money on the open market than your boy A.J. Brown. Face recognition doesn't like work. When A.J. Brown, when A. J. Becomes... Brown is a free agent, Corey Davis is more valuable than A.J. Brown. Starts on your go. Why he should get more money Co or why, more value. you got to be why specific. Why Corey Davis should get more money on the open market than A.J. Brown, who would be on the open market. <laughs> Looking up stats? Who gets to look up stats during bad sales job? That's never been happening. I haven't started. Oh, my God. This is ridiculous. Nobody has looked up stats before. This should be an automatic loss for Zach because he has to look up stats to win this argument. Nobody's done this I before. Haven't, I haven't started. God bless. I don't want to do this. I mean, come on. Corey Davis is the consummate pro, and what you're going to get is consistency from here on out. That's what Corey Davis is. Blocking downfield, catching the ball, going out of bounds, getting the first down, now starting the next play. That's what you're going to get. Almost 1,000 yards receiving last year, five touchdowns, has gotten better every single year, and now is his breakout year. He needs more money. A.J. Brown is a liability at times. <laughs> you don't know. I, I, <laughs> you don't know what you're going to. Uh, you're done. <laughs> oh, victory to Batman. I, I retract that last statement. God dang it. All right. Six and six. Back to 500. Yeah, I mean, we I pull even. I didn't win that. Yeah. Thank you. With a bad, with the open up. I'm glad contract. I got Corey Davis out of the way. I want Corey Davis out of my life, but like we'll Mar Mariota's out of my life. 
I don't. I have a feeling that Corey Davis is going to stick around. And again, I like the guy. He's a really good dude. Like he is. Who are you uh, talking about, Mario or Corey Davis? Corey, well, <laughs> both. But like Corey Davis is a good man. Like he's a good person. Everything that I've heard from inside the locker room, from our interactions, from the guys that work with him on a day to day basis in St. Thomas Sports. Great Corey teammate. Davis is a great team. Downfield blocking. I don't care when it comes to contract negotiations about that. Oh, man. If you're a five overall pick, I want you to the catch touchdowns. The fact touchdown. that you said A.J. Brown is a liability at times had to have hurt. It just didn't make sense. No, none of it made sense. I the, the, this I, I, That's why I like this. I don't like the sports aspect of this. I know we've done the sports themed of this. Well, it just but depends. bad sales jobs, like, it shouldn't be about like that. <laughs> I'm trying to win. I I'm know. I'm doing no, whatever you, I can you, to win. You could not afford to get down to I and needed up, a point, so you, and I had to bring the guns. Fair. And I fair. did. It, it was the Adam Gase versus Bill Belichick thing. I, I completely understand. It just, that was so stupid, it didn't make it's, any it's sense. It's a bad sales job. No, that was a disaster. Bad sales job. So you would fail as Corey Davis's agent. I wouldn't be Corey Davis's agent. Yeah. I wouldn't be an agent. I'm not a sleazeball. Puka says thought Zach's brain was going to escape out of his skull rather than answer that question. All right, guys. Good show here at Mill Creek Brewing Company here in Nolensville. Guys, come out here Saturday. They have a cornhole tournament. So you can play a tournament while watching the tournament out here at Mill Creek Brewing Company in Nolensville. It's just $150 per team for the Cornhole Tournament, which gets you entry into the event. Obviously, uh, an event gift, lunch, open bar, open bar. Uh, also, door prize ticket and silent auction access. If you don't want to play Cornhole Tournament while watching the tournament and you just want to watch both tournaments, you can pay a ticket of $25 where you get open bar and lunch and silent auction uh, access as well here at Mill Creek Brewing Company in Nolensville. Check them out on Eventbrite. Search Mill Creek Brewing. Search the Cornhole Classic, and you can find yourself there. Hell, even I may make it out here on Saturday. Oh. Still working out my plans. There you I will go. not be wearing this Baskin costume because I feel like it is suffocating my neck. Well, we are almost we are almost out of there. I, I will say I've... I'm proud of myself, Austin. It did cross my mind to say I'm going to just take the loss and not participate. Really? But I wouldn't you almost do, wave I, the white flag. I wasn't going to do that to this show and to these people, but it did cross my mind to say I'm not. I will not play. I'm going to take my. I'm going to forfeit. But I'm not a forfeiter. I, I play, and uh, that pained me to do. So congratulations on the win again. Mill Creek Brewing, great place to come. Great beer. They're spreading the brand all over Middle Tennessee. Help us help them do that, including our bracket challenge. We will put that out very, very soon after this show. So make sure you sign up. We got great pre pre prizes uh, on the horizon for that bracket. All right, guys. We'll see you tomorrow on a Tuesday. Legal negotiating period opens in an hour and a half in the NFL. So make sure you're following us on all of our social media. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, our website, it is esportsnational.com for all the Titans conversation for that. And we'll see you guys tomorrow morning. Appreciate